Okay, so next up, um, let's actually get our 3D character here and Maya to match the um, 2D character animation uh, we've got implied here in After Effects. So uh, that means getting this character's arms up into position. And I will walk you through this just in case animation isn't something you've done a lot of before. Now you'll notice I've got um, a separate window to work in here, and this is my perspective window. And I'm very careful not to move my shot window at all, and that's just good practice. Um, if you're wondering how to set that up, I have gone over that in the previous vi video in that series. In this series, I should say. Okay, so I'm just using basic move tools here to get this character um, character's hand up in a position. And um, certainly not showing up on camera yet. Ah, there we go. Let's turn X-ray mode back on so that we can actually see where that hand needs to be. And um, I'm trying to match that hand position best as I can. Let's see. In Maya, what does it look like? Well, it, obviously I'm in Maya. Um, I should say in perspective, what does it look like? In perspective, well, her hand's in the right position, but it kind of looks like her wrist is broken with the position that her elbow's in. It's just kind of like on snap. So if her wrist is going to be in that position, um, just double check which it is, and it's possibly even a little bit closer to her body. Yeah, that's starting to look a little bit better. It's got the right perspective on it now. So if, that, if her wrist is going to be in this position, um, really her elbow needs to flare out to the side, or else otherwise, well, her wrist snaps. So I need to go find the pole vectors constraints that belong to that elbow, which are just here, hidden inside the polygon wall. Now anytime you can't find something because it's hiding something else, you can always just hit 4 on your keyboard to go to wireframe mode. And if I just, um, uh, with that pull vector constraint selected, if I just move that out, you can see that flares her elbow out. Um, now how to build a rig like this is all covered in the Rigging for Maya series that I've p added into the comments, or I should say the description for this video, so go ahead and check that out if you want to figure out how to build your own rig. Um, it's a very, very simple rig. This is obviously just for blocking out animation. You're not going to be doing any complex um, keyboard playing or anything with this particular rig. Okay, so she's got her hand... Um, she's sort of prepared to tap on that phone. Let's get everything into position. Uh, she's got her hand up like that. And sometimes I work in my actual camera shot, and sometimes I work in perspective. And I just sort of jump between the two of them to try and get um, get exactly what it is I'm going for here. So uh, it kind of looks right in the 2D shot, but obviously her hand's totally in the wrong position in 3D, and her elbow is starting to break. So let's make sure that we get... Um, the shot looking good from all angles. So hands definitely coming forward as if she's about to tap that phone. Um, it does need to come up quite a bit. And come out. And of course her arm is now inside of her body in perspective view, which I'm going to have to go in and fix in just a minute. But we can do that after we get the positioning of this hand right. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the positioning of the hand there. And I'll just go into wireframe mode, grab that pull vector, and um, move it so that her arm is no longer sitting inside of her body. Now, the poses will never be absolutely exact. Um, I can do a lot in 2D that I can't do in 3D. What with 3D actually, you know, kind of following the laws of physics, and 2D definitely you don't have to. So I get as close as I can. I get the spirit of the pose. Okay. Hands are in the right position. Head's in the right position. Camera's in the right position. Um, 
I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, that's all set up. Now, the thing about animation is, you want to be absolutely certain. Oh, and I've already got some animation on the camera. I want to get rid of that. Uh, but I'll finish my sentence first. You want to be absolutely certain that um, whenever you're animating controls like this, that you don't move to another frame on the timeline, or else you will lose your animation. Um, I don't have any keyframes on this character right now, but I can demonstrate using this camera, which I haven't taken the keyframes off of yet. So, oh, I see what's happened. Camera's not animated at all. You know what made me think it was animating? Look at that. Look at that. As the image moves in the background, it is just late enough at night that I'm like, oh my goodness, my camera moved. No, no, you're just being silly. Okay, anyways, what I was saying. If I had animations on this character and I went to uh, go move her, I would lose them when I went to change my timeline. So just to demonstrate, I'll set keyframes on all these controls and then I'll move her into a silly position and I will show you how that position disappears. So first, let's, um, let's make it very easy to select all of our controls, same way we did with the polygons. So in perspective here, I'll just go show none and show, this time I'll go NURBS curves. You'll see all I've got are my curves there. My controls all happen to be made out of curves. So I'll select all of those, and I'm going to create something called a quick select set. So that's under create, sets, and a quick select set will do exactly as the name implies. It will quickly select that set. Um, if I just go add to shelf, it will automatically jump that onto my shelf up here. And let's just go show all again. If I click away, and I click this button I've added to my shelf, you'll see that I have now selected all my controls. Next button I want to add to my shelf is the set key button. So that's up under animate, and you'll see set key here. Now if you don't see these drop downs at the top of the, the UI, it might be because the um, you don't have that menu selected. Obviously there's different menu options for each of these different uh, departments. So just make sure that the drop down on the far left has animation selected. So under animate, set key. If I hold down sh control and shift on my keyboard, I'm holding those down and I left click, you'll see that it's created this um, icon for me on my shelf. So with my control selected, I'll just click on, well first I'll make sure I'm actually on frame zero, which I am, good. I'll click on set key, and that's created a little red line down here to show me that a key's been set, and um, my attributes have gone red, which also tells me that a key has been set. So if I just move my timeline slightly, and let's just, uh, let's just be awfully silly, and we'll grab that controller. We'll just move her up. Oh gosh, that's really weird. Now if I just click anywhere else in the timeline, bam, she snaps right back to position because I didn't actually set a key first. So best practice, always make sure that you set a key before you go to animate the next pose. Okay, in my case, um, I need to do exactly the same thing I did getting this controller into position. Um, getting her hands into position to move her entire self over to frame um, 160 when she's leaning against this pole here and looking out, um, looking at the train. And so first, what I'm going to do, I'll show you. I'll show you a bit of a trick to make sure I give her a neutral position. And then, what I'll do after that is I will just um, time lapse this video so you don't actually have to watch me. Or sorry, you don't have to actually listen to me setting my keyframes. Um, I'll just speed through that uh, keyframe in an animation. And when I stop, she will be moving from pose to pose across the, um, the train car. Okay. So uh, now just to get her into position first, I like to use this um, uh, world controller here to get her into position. <laughs> she still looks funny, obviously, because she is, well, 
she hasn't actually moved yet. But I'm looking at the positioning of her feet, and I want to get that sort of like two-thirds of the way across the carriage, because she's about two-thirds of the way across here. Um, ooh, no, I, should, I lie. Her feet's pretty much in the middle, and she's just leaning forward. Okay, easiest way to make this work is um, I want to give her a neutral position again. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to um, show and none and just give me my curves back. I'm going to select all of them, but I'm going to deselect that world position there. And in my channel attributes, if I select the translate and rotate option um, text fields here and just enter zero, you'll see these all go straight up and down again. And if I bring everything back, she's now in a neutral position. Um, now that's only possible because I set up my rig correctly and I zeroed out all my transforms here. And I do, of course, cover that in the series on rigging, which you'll find in the descriptions. Okay, so she's in a neutral position now. And just in case I decide to go do something crazy, like change what frame I'm on, I'm going to select all those controls while she's in that neutral position. And I'm just going to set a keyframe on frame 160. And then I'll actually get her in position. I'll select the controls again. I'll replace that keyframe. Um, and then I'll get in position for frame uh, 221. And um, then we'll go through and we'll animate our cameras. OK, let's do that uh, time lapse recording. Okay, so um, what I've got now is I have all three of my extreme poses set up, my beginning, um, the extreme pose on frame 160, and of course the final pose where she is looking out the window. 
Um, now you will notice that uh, from frame 0 till 160, if I zoom in here, we'll actually make that full screen, watch her, watch her left hand there, well her right hand, um, as it breaks and turns and goes off in the space and all, does all kinds of weird stuff. So in the next video, when we start doing in-betweens, which is um, adding uh, basically, what does it look like when she first stands up? What does it look like when she's gaining her feet? What does it look like when she's reaching for the pole? These are poses that sit in between my key poses, which is why they are called in-betweens. Um, so in the next chapter, we'll go through the in-betweens. And, um, well, chapter after next. Chapter after next, we'll go through the in-betweens. And in that chapter, we'll also clean up some of the animation errors as well. Um, but immediately after this, let's actually animate the camera so that the camera follows her as she moves from one side of the train car to the other. Because at the moment, um, if I were to scrub through my camera sequence here, here, you'll see that it does not actually follow her. In fact, she gets up out of shot, and while the uh, 2D image sequence is playing, the 3D camera actually hasn't moved at all. Okay, so let's stop that here and then we'll animate the camera in the next chapter.